Hello and welcome. I hope that you are having a fantastic day today. We have a very, very important video created just for you. I've been dealing with cryptocurrency since August of 2018. And so I had to file a capital gains tax on my cryptocurrency in 2018, 2019. And I'm just finishing up my 2020 report. And so I wanted to tell you a little bit about my experiences with cryptocurrency tax preparation software. The, these are programs that go out and look at your wallets and they go and look and pull in all of your transactions or hopefully all of your transactions. And then they help you create the tax forms that you need for, to, in order to report capital gains. So let's get into it. All right, so the first thing is, I'm not a financial advisor. I'm not a tax attorney. I'm not a CPA. I, I only know enough about taxes that I've learned from the various uh, tax, uh, you know, the crypto tax websites, as well as what I've learned from doing my taxes uh, for the last three years. This is the third time. So this is not financial advice. This is my opinion. Uh, if you are someone who is required to file taxes for your cryptocurrency, uh, please, please, please engage a CPA or somebody who understands and knows cryptocurrency taxes and can help you out with it. Now, as always, cryptocurrency involves substantial risk of loss. It's not suitable for every investor. The rest of this paragraph is really important information. It's here to help you take profits and avoid losses. And some of those losses can come upon you because of, of, of laws, because of legalities. Not just because you bought a cryptocurrency and it tanked, but it also could be because you didn't do things correct from a legal perspective. And so always be careful with your trading. Only use money that you can afford to lose. Uh, if, if you lost 100% of what you've got in cryptocurrency, is that going to hurt your ability to keep a roof over your head and food on the table? If so, stop and don't do it. Um, also, you will need to seek, I, I, I believe and strongly recommend that you do seek financial advice from somebody that can help you prepare your cryptocurrency taxes so that you can make sure that it gets done correctly. Now, this is our website. I hope you'll come visit us at luminatecrypto.com. Um, if you do, we also have a place where you can sign up for our email list. And when we put out uh, any kind of videos or if we have any kind of special online event, a webinar or whatnot, you will get notified of those. Now, <coughs> excuse me. Zen Ledger is the first tax, uh, uh, crypt, uh, tax preparation program I used. I used Zen Ledger to prepare my 2018, 2019, and I started to try and do my 2020 taxes using Zen Ledger. Now, Zen Ledger is a good program. Um, there's a lot of different features, and if you go to their website, you can scroll through and read all their information. But there's one thing that I had a problem with, and that was after I had imported what I believed and, and after I had imported all of the different transactions from different wallets, from different exchanges, um, from you know my Ethereum address, my Bitcoin address, et cetera, et cetera. I mean, there was a, a ton of stuff that had to get imported into Zen Ledger. Zen Ledger then tries to match up all of the different transactions and the ones that cannot match, you have to go and manually update. Well, in 2018, I spent days trying to match those unmatched transactions. And now part of that problem was it was my first year and I had never done this before and I had well, when I finally printed out my 8959 for my tax forms and for, for, to file my income taxes, I had 80 pages of transactions. 
And so it, it just, it was already complex my very, very first year. I had bought and traded 35 different cryptocurrencies uh, during between August, uh, middle of August of 2018 out to the end of December of 2018. And so I had a, a ton of transactions and it was really difficult. And then in 2019, I, I knew the process a little bit better, uh, but I still had a lot of trouble trying to match up those unmatched transactions. And then for 2020, I got in there and I found that somehow things had gotten messed up in my account and it had forgotten what I had done in 2018 and 2019. Just a word of advice, when you file your cryptocurrency taxes, if you bought a coin several years ago, and then you sold it last year or during that tax year, you need to have a record of when you bought it so that you know the price you paid for that cryptocurrency so that when you sell that cryptocurrency and selling, uh, it, it doesn't matter if you buy Ethereum and then later you trade Ethereum for Bitcoin. So you're just simply trading coin one for coin two that is a taxable event. So check with your tax attorney or your tax professional, your tax CPA, and, and make sure that you're gathering the right information. But just simply trading coin A for coin B uh, is a taxable event and you will be responsible for either a capital gains or capital loss for every single trade you made from one coin to another coin or uh, from, you know, whatever the situation is. I mean, just, just moving coins from one exchange such as Coinbase into a hardware wallet, I found that sometimes it couldn't match the, the, the transaction that just simply moved the coin from, from the exchange into my hardware wallet. And so I ended up having to match those. Anyway, in 2020, I had over a thousand different transactions that it looked like I needed to go back and fix because it had somehow lost a bunch of my transactions for 2019 and 2018. And um, so I was having to re-import a whole bunch of data and I was rematching stuff that I had matched in previous years. And so I kind of got frustrated with Zen Ledger and that forced me to try another uh, other programs. And I did a lot of research on the internet and I finally decided I was going to put in the time to see if I could get this done in Coin Tracker much more efficiently. Now I say put in the time because it takes time identifying the address for each hardware wallet. I, I, I've used a Trezor, I've used a Keep Key, and I've used a Ledger hardware wallets. And so I ended up with about 45-ish different uh, addresses, uh, wallet addresses out there. I had some addresses for Ledger. I had some addresses for the Keep Key. I had some addresses for uh, my Trezor. And I needed to gather all of those different addresses together so that Crip Coin Tracker could actually import transactions from those addresses in order to compile uh, my cryptocurrency capital gains and capital losses. Anyway, uh, I was resistant to even changing to another company because of the amount of time. I mean, it, it, it took me hours just to get Coin Tracker set up with all the different addresses and with the different exchanges that I used throughout 2018 all the way up to 2020. Because in order for Coin Tracker to accurately do taxes, it needed to know from my very, 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 very first transaction all the way up to right now. Anyway, once I got all that done, I found that I had less than 100 unmatched transactions. In other words, Coin Tracker did a much better job for me matching the transactions, and, and it was matching the transactions that was the hardest part. For doing my cryptocurrencies, I spent more time trying to match the transactions than any other thing with these two software programs. And while Coin Tracker matched a lot more, I still had to do the research for each of the transactions to figure out, you know, what happened here, what's going on, et cetera, et cetera. And so you might ask me, geez, if you had to spend days getting all this worked out, 
Is it really worth it? Absolutely. I don't know of anywhere else that I could have seen the kinds of gains that I've seen for myself and my family without cryptocurrency. I'm trying to build up a nest egg for retirement for my wife and I so that we have enough money that we aren't homeless when we retire or that we aren't struggling when we retire. I want to avoid that kind of situation. And so that's why I'm investing in cryptocurrency because I want to build up that nest egg in that cushion. Anyway, I feel it's absolutely worth the headache of filing the capital gains because of the amount of money we've made through cryptocurrency to date. Now, I couldn't say that because in 2018 because we had a significant loss. And I could not say that in 2019 because we were still, we had another loss in 2019. In 2020 was our first year that we saw some profit. And um, we, we have to pay a larger tax bill than we normally do just because of the profit we made from cryptocurrency. But so far this year in 2021, um, we've, we've about tripled or, I mean, we've just done way better than we did in 2019, uh, for, I'm sorry, 2021 is only, we're only three months, four months. Well, today is March 25th. So we're almost four months into 2021. And so far in 2021, we have done about triple uh, profit-wise what we did in 2020. And 2020 was our first profitable year with cryptocurrency. So I am, I, while it's, it's been a headache, while it's been painful, I have not enjoyed preparing the taxes. I have to say it's well, well worth it because the amount of money that we've made uh, would have taken me a lot more time, effort, and energy to earn with my regular job than it's taken with cryptocurrency. And so it really, really has done a great things for us. And so if you're having a difficult year with cryptocurrency, I want to encourage you to stick with it. It may take you time. It may take you months or years before things really kick into gear for you. But if you hang in there and you keep working at it, I believe it'll work out for you just like it's worked out for me. I think you'll see profits in the long term. Uh, you just have to have a, a, a longer term view of the thing. Think in terms of you know being in cryptocurrency for at least four years. Because if you've been in cryptocurrency for four years or longer, with if, if all you did was buy Bitcoin, you would be making money. Now, there's plenty of, of altcoins that I would be very, very cautious, very, very concerned about because, you know, so far there's about 4,000 altcoins that have gone to absolutely zero, absolutely nothing. And so keep your bulk of your investments. And this is not financial advice. This is my opinion. And this is how I run my cryptocurrency uh, portfolio. But I strongly recommend that you keep the bulk of your portfolio in Bitcoin, Ethereum, um, possibly ADA, but keep the bulk of it in the top 20 uh, cryptocurrencies. And even some of the top 20 are not great investments because if you look at what the top 20 was, say two years ago or four years ago or five years ago, a lot of the cryptocurrencies that were in the top 20 in 2017 and 2016 are not there anymore. In fact, some of them don't even exist really. Anyway, my point is keep the bulk of your investment in the safer cryptocurrencies. I understand that, that doing your cryptocurrency taxes is gonna be time consuming and painful and you're gonna need to contact their customer service for whatever company you use, uh, possibly many times until you kind of figure out how to do it. Um, and then once you've got a good handle on it, you'll probably need to do that less and less. Even when I was setting things up with Coin Tracker, I still had to contact customer service uh, about on three or four different questions that I had on how do I figure X, Y, and Z out. You'll probably have to do the same. But usually, and my experience with both Coin Tracker and Zen Ledger is that their customer service has been really good and timely in answering questions. 
Um, and so I, I, I didn't stop using Zen Ledger because the product was broken or because the customer service was bad. I used it because it didn't do enough matching of my transactions um, and left me with such a huge amount of work to do. And I found that that wasn't the case with Coin Tracker, but I had to take a leap of faith because I knew it was going to take me a lot of time just to get Coin Tracker set up because of the way I've handled uh, all of my buying and selling with cryptocurrency. So um, I hope that yours isn't as big a mess as mine has been because I jumped in like a wild man and bought 35 different coins and had some coins that were on really obscure wallets uh, that I had to download special wallets just to move it off the exchange. It was it was crazy. And so I have to maintain all of that now that I've actually done those kinds of trades. So that would be another thing that I would recommend. If it's not on the Bitcoin network, if it's not on the Ethereum network, think twice about purchasing it because you're going to have, you're going to, if you, if you buy something that's on a different network, um, oh, I'm trying to think of, I mean, there's so many different coins. VeChain is one I was just looking at. I was thinking about, do I really want to invest in VeChain? I know it has a lot of potential. I know it could produce some great gains. Um, the concern I have is that it's not on a standard, um, it's, not on, it's not an Ethereum coin. And so I have to set up a VeChain wallet and a number of different things. And so I had to ask myself, do I really want to, deal with the extra work that comes into handling a coin that's not easily trackable for capital gains for purposes and, and everything else involved with um, something that's kind of outside the little realm I've created for myself. So anyway, I've done a lot of rambling. I, I probably got into things I wasn't planning on. Let me cover this last part of Coin Tracker, um, and then I'll end this video for you. So, some of the features of Coin Tracker are similar to features that I found on Zen Ledger, and quite honestly, um, they're they're very similar to the features that I found on almost every one of the different uh, applications out there for handling your cryptocurrency taxes. For example. All of them will easily connect many different exchanges and wallets. All of them like to say that they will connect all exchanges and all wallets. But here's the gotcha. Some of them are automated and some of them you're going to have to figure out. And, and many of the uh, like Coin Tracker and Zen Ledger will give you nice detailed instructions, but they don't always automatically connect to all the different exchanges. Sometimes you have to download files and then upload those files into the uh, uh, product. And sometimes you actually have to go into the file and massage it so that it is in the format that Coin Tracker or Zen Ledger really wants. And so if you're using an exchange that does not produce, does not allow them, allow you to connect via an API, um, and gives you a CSV file, that exchange may be more difficult to handle. For example, I, I recently have started trading on Bybit and with Zen Ledger, I have to download and get CSV files, um, comma separated files for all of the data off of Zen Ledger. Whereas Coin Tracker was able to connect to Bybit through Bybit's API and Coin Tracker has been able to pull all of the different transactions off of Bybit. And that's, that's been important because I've been doing quite a bit of trading right on Bybit. They talk about how they, they uh, all of the different ones will track your entire crypto portfolio, but I did find that Coin Tracker gives me more information in terms of my portfolio where it's at right now today as well as where it was at for uh, the different tax years. Um, they all now, instantly is kind of an interesting word here. They all generate tax reports, but I don't know if I would say it does it instantly. Uh, Coin Tracker uh, kind of sort of does it instantly, but they all take some time to actually output the report. Uh, I'm going to skip over the stats, but these are stats about Coin Tracker and how there's a big, huge success. 
Uh, they sync over 300 wallets and exchanges. All of them tell you how they sync a whole bunch of wallets and exchanges. But here's the gotcha with that, and I kind of covered it a little bit earlier, is that sometimes the exchange doesn't provide an API that your, your uh, tax prep software can connect to. And if it doesn't have an API, uh, then you're going to have to do it on a more manual type basis. And some of them don't give you all the information even if you do have an API because there's been a couple of exchanges that says your, the API will only give you information or, or, or trades back to 2019 or back to 2008, 2018, 2019. So it gives you specific years that they will allow you to pull the data back to. And if you have transactions prior to that date, you're going to have to pull a CSV file and hopefully you can import the CSV smoothly without having to jump over a bunch of hoops. Saying that they support 2,500 cryptocurrencies, I think that's kind of a funny statement because all of them support Ethereum tokens and with Ethereum tokens alone, you pretty much have 2,500 cryptocurrencies and actually more than that. Uh, testimonials, frequently asked questions and they're ready to track your portfolio and taxes for you. So while they really do a while both both products really do a good job of trying to prepare everything, I think Coin Tracker, well, I don't think Coin Tracker did take me less time and effort to get everything set up, but I just want you to know in advance that getting this set up even using these tools is not as easy as it sounds from the promotional material that they're gonna, that you know, that they have on their website. And so be prepared to take some time because it will take you time to get everything set up. And it really depends a lot on how much, you know, what kind of trading you did as a cryptocurrency investor. Did you just open a Coinbase account and put a few hundred dollars into Coinbase and buy two or three cryptos and then just let it sit there, then it'll be pretty easy. But if you put a bunch of money into Coinbase and then you pulled it out and put it into a hardware wallet and then you pushed it out to other exchanges and trade it for some exotic and esoteric coins because you know Mr. So-and-so told you how this thing is gonna blow up and so you went ahead and bought a, a, a portion of that coin to add it to your wallets or maybe you needed to download a special software wallet just for that coin all of those things add more and more and more complexity to what you need to do in order to handle your cryptocurrency taxes and so i hope it's easier for you than it's been for me i hope that you can get it done really quickly in conclusion I do want to encourage you to Tikkun Olam. Tikkun Olam is ancient Jewish wisdom and it teaches that the person, purpose or reason for life is to Tikkun Olam. Now Tikkun Olam translates from ancient Jewish wisdom as repair a broken world. So how do you repair a broken world? Start with acts of kindness. Find somebody close to you, find somebody in your neighborhood, find somebody that you know, uh, whether it's a, a, a family member or not a family member, but look for opportunities to do acts of kindness and you're taking steps to repair a broken world as a result of that. Um, and then finally, how can I be of service to you? How can I do acts of kindness for you? Do you have any questions, thoughts, comments? please leave them on the YouTube channel or leave them on the, you know, wherever you're watching this video from. In the meantime, do me a favor and like, subscribe, and hodl. I hope that you have a fantastic day.